Texas Math Mundo audience. Today we add to our instructional series the topic asymptotes. Uh, you have vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, oblique asymptotes, and we have rules for them. Uh, these are usually encountered when you're discussing rational functions. Uh, the Texas UIL competitive mathematics exams, also the SAT subjects exams, often have uh, asymptote problems on there. So without further ado, let's talk asymptotes. Start it. So asymptotes usually happen in the context of rational functions. So a rational function is simply the quotient of two of two uh, polynomial functions. Let's call the numerator polynomial n of x and the denominator polynomial d of x. And let's say they have degrees, uh, say the degree of the numerator is m and the degree of the denominator is k. Okay, so let's talk about vertical asymptotes. How do you find vertical asymptotes? So vertical asymptotes, first of all, the candidates are all the lines, the vertical lines x equals c, where c is a root of the denominator polynomial, where d of c is equal to zero. However, it's not always an asymptote. It could simply be a hole in the graph or a point of continuity. Uh, so if we re-express if x minus c or c is a root of both the, the numerator and the denominator polynomials, then it's a hole in the graph. So if we re-express our rational function as the, okay, the numerator polynomial divided by the denominator polynomial, and if x minus c or c is a root so we got some sort of reduced polynomials on top, and x minus c is also a factor on the bottom. Uh, let's call it, I don't know, z of x. Uh, if that's the case, then what you have is a hole in the graph, a point of discontinuity, uh, not a vertical asymptote. Otherwise, if c is a root of the denominator polynomial, and it doesn't cancel out, not a root of the numerator polynomial, then you actually have a legit vertical asymptote. And we'll look at some examples. We're just doing some notes here real quick like, and shortly we'll do the examples. For, hor for horizontal asymptotes, again, we have a rational function, meaning the ratio of two polynomials, a numerator polynomial and a denominator polynomial. Let's say the numerator has degree m, and the denominator has degree k. Uh, to find horizontal asymptotes, first, the first rule, first, for horizontal asymptotes, we're going to compare the degrees. First, if the denominator degree, which we call k, if that is greater than the numerator degree, m, if that's the case, well, the the denominator polynomial for extreme values of x is blowing up at a much more uh, rapid rate than the numerator polynomial, and hence your overall rational function will begin to uh, be asymptotic to the x-axis or the line y equals zero is your horizontal asymptote. Uh, again, if the denominator degree of the polynomial, the degree of the uh, polynomial in the denominator is bigger than the degree of the polynomial in the numerator. Then, uh, for extreme values of x, the denominator is blowing up much quicker, and your line will start uh, being asymptotic to the x-axis or the y equals, line, uh, y equals zero line. Now, if they have the same, if, if, if second, if the degree of the numerator polynomial, which we call m in this case, is equal to the degree of the denominator polynomial, we call k, then what happens is y, y is equal to the ratio of the lead coefficients will be the horizontal asymptote. So if you re-express your polynomial and the numerator polynomial, say you call it uh, a sub n x to the n plus you know a sub n minus one x to the n minus one dot 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 plus x uh, plus a sub zero all over and say let me use b's on the bottom. b sub n x to the n b sub n minus one x to the n minus one plus dot 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 plus some constant, then y is equal to the ratio of the lead coefficients is then your denominator. And we'll see some examples, your uh, horizontal asymptote. And we'll see some examples. Again, so in summary, horizontal asymptotes 
We're going to compare the degrees of the numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial. <coughs> if the degree of the denominator polynomial is greater than the degree of the numerator polynomial, then uh, for extreme values, the bottom is blowing up much faster and the rational function becomes asymptotic to the x-axis or the y equals zero line. If the degree of the denominator, denominator polynomial and numerator polynomial are equal, then y is equal to the ratio of the lead coefficients is that becomes your horizontal asymptote. All right, so that's horizontal asymptote. And finally, let's talk about slant asymptotes or oblique asymptotes as they're called sometimes. Again, you have your rational function with a numerator polynomial over a uh, denominator polynomial. And so if you have the degree again, uh, degree M on the numerator, degree K, on the denominator. So a slant asymptote, or sometimes called oblique asymptote, they occur when the degree of the numerator, so in this case m, is equal to one more than the degree of the denominator. So it's equal, so the degree of the numerator is one more, so for extreme values of x, the rational function starts to act linear. And so to find the <coughs> equation of this, what you do is you simply get the quotient, uh, you actually divide long division, or you can also use your TI Inspire, I'll, I'll show you both. What I, so often I make the example, 8 thirds can be written as 2 plus the 2 thirds, where it's the quotient and the remainder. Well, in a similar way, Q of X will be able to be written, and once you do the long division, as the quotient, which will actually be the equation of your slant asymptote, plus the remainder. And for extreme values of x, this will go to zero, and you'll have your slant asymptote. So those are the rules for asymptotes. For, again, for slant or oblique, the degree of the numerator polynomial is one more than the degree of the non denominator polynomial. <coughs> you do your long division, and you'll get the equation of the slant asymptote, and oftentimes we can, we can uh, evaluate. So those are our rules. Let's go towards examples. All right, our first example, we go to the year 2022, the region, UIL region exam in mathematics, and number 28. They give you a rational function, and they give you uh, five options, and you have to see which ones are true. The first step, usually with these problems, for me, is to re-express your rational function in factored form. The numerator is simply a difference of perfect squares, x minus 4, x plus 4, and the denominator, uh, you need two numbers to multiply to give you a positive 20, but add to give you a negative 9 would be x minus 4, x minus 5. First thing to note is the x minus 4 cancel out, so that would be a point of discontinuity. Uh, so let's go through each one of these uh, one at a time. On number 1, it says negative 4, 0 is an x-intercept, but the uh, and so that happens where the numerator is equal to 0. So an x-intercept happens where y is equal to 0 but y is like h of x here. So that's gonna happen where the numerator is equal to zero. And indeed, for x equals negative four, if x equals negative four, you do get the numerator being zero and hence your y being zero. And so number one is true. Easy to see once it's in factored form. Number two says four zeros in x-intercept. Well, the problem is, if you look at the denominator, it's not even defined for x equals four. That uh, it basically leads to division by zero. So number two cannot happen because it's not even defined for x equals four, lead to division by zero, and so that cannot be an x-intercept. It just doesn't exist. Number three, <coughs> x equals negative five is a vertical asymptote. Let's take a look. Remember your candidates are x equals c, where c is a zero of the denominator polynomial, and indeed, at x equals, with x equals negative five, with x equals negative five is a vertical asymptote, no, your candidates for vertical asymptotes would be where your denominator function is equal to zero, and uh, the denominator is actually defined for x equals negative five. That does not lead to zero. So three cannot be a vertical asymptote. Four, x equals four is a vertical asymptote. Well, <clears throat> the problem with x equals four is that it cancels out. So it's not a vertical asymptote. It's only a hole in the graph or a point of discontinuity. See how the, all these uh, definitions and rules are coming clear? Number five, 
Y equals one is a horizontal acetyl. Well, let's compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator of polynomial. You got a second degree polynomial on top, a second degree polynomial on bottom. So they are equal. So you will have a horizontal acetyl at Y equals the ratio of the lead coefficients. And that's one over one. So Y equals one is a horizontal acetyl. And that is true. So one and five are the only ones that are true. And so your answer is A. All right, our next example, we go to the year 2021, UILB number 50. It says the vertical acetope and oblique acetope of the following rational function intersect at the point x, y. Find the value of y. So <coughs> let's start off with the vertical acetope of this function. It's where uh, it's x equal the zero of the denominator function, and that's very easy. So x equals one is the vertical acetope. And notice that one is not a root of the numerator polynomial. So x equals one is indeed a vertical acetope. And then the oblique acetope. Look, the denominator, uh, the denom denominator is one less than the numerator. So there is an oblique acetope. And the way to find this acetope uh, is you can just simply do long division. X minus one goes into two X squared, two X squared plus three X plus five, and uh, we go too deep, so to get the first ones to match up, you're gonna multiply by two x. Two x times a negative one is a negative two x. Two x times x is two x squared. You subtract, and that becomes three x plus the two x. It's gonna be five x, and then you drop the five plus five. To get it to match, you're gonna multiply by plus five. So that's a minus five, and that's five x. When you subtract, it becomes 10, and so your uh, rational function f of x can be re-expressed as your quotient plus your remainder functions. And in this case, it's 2x plus 5 plus 10 over x minus 1. And what you get here is this is your standard asymptote because for extreme values of x, the remainder will go to zero and your function will act as, as this line. Uh, so uh, if you were to, uh, so at x equals one, so you got your vertical asymptote at x equals one, you got your horizontal asymptote at two x plus five. If you plug in, uh, so they're gonna have the value one in common. And if they intersect and if you plug one in, it's one and seven. And they're asking for the y value, which is seven. Now a quick note, you don't have to do the long division. You can simply do uh, the TI Inspire, should you wish. Uh, they have a polynomial function, so real quick like, you can go to Menu, you can go to uh, Algebra, Polynomial Tools, and the Quotient of Polynomial. So in this case, you can put the first polynomial, which is, let's take a look, 2x squared, so 2x squared uh, plus 3x plus 3x, oops, uh, plus 5, and then comma, put your other polynomial, which in this case is x minus 1, x minus 1, enter. And you got your 2x plus 5. So the, uh, the TI Inspire, you, you don't even have to do the long division. You know, in the math test, you're allowed the calculator. Uh, and also on the SAT, I believe. I don't know about the subject level, though. Uh, so there you go. Uh, you can actually just use your TI Inspire to get your slant acetone. And that's how it's done. All right, our next example, we go to the year 2023, the UILB, Texas UILB uh, release number 42. Again, they give you a rational function. And uh, they ask you about one, two, or three, whether they're true. So the way I approach this problem is I first factor the numerator and denominator polynomials. The top one is relatively easy. Uh, two numbers that multiply give you negative 28, but add to give you seven. So that would be x plus, I mean, add to give you three, excuse me. x plus seven, x minus four. That's an easy factorization. The second one gives my students quite a bit of troubles. I've seen various ways to teach how to factor a polynomial with a lead coefficient that's not one. I use a method called the boom, boom, boom method. 
Uh, you know, the lead coefficient, 2x, 2x over 2. You multiply the first and the last, that's negative 70. I need two numbers to multiply to give you negative 70, but add up to, to 9. And uh, those numbers are 14 and negative 5, so plus 14, plus 14, and minus 5. And so that 2 is problematic, but you can take a 2 out of the left-hand factor. So when you take out a 2, you're left with x plus 7, 2x minus 5 over 2, and leaving you correct factorization. So the factorization is x plus 7, 2x minus 5. Again, uh, that's problematic uh, factoring with a lead coefficient. My students often struggle with that. But this is our polynomial in factored form, and now it'll be easy just to see 1, 2, 3 are correct. Well, number 1, it says f of x is not continuous at x equals negative 7. Well, it's, it's not even defined at x equals negative 7, so indeed, it's, you're going to have to pick up your pen at that point, so it's not continuous there. At x equals 4, it is defined. So at x equals 4, it is continuous. So 1 is not true, although it's true that it's not continuous at x equals negative 7, it is indeed continuous at x equals 4. Because the function is defined there, and uh, there you go. So number two, the vertical lines x equals negative 7 and x equals uh, 2.5 are vertical asymptotes. Well, x equals 2.5 is a vertical asymptote because it doesn't factor out. It doesn't cancel out as a factor. That's not a root of the numerator polynomial. But x equals negative 7 does factor out. That factor does factor out. So what you have there is a hole in the graph, just a point of discontinuity. That's a hole in the graph. That is not an asymptote at x equals negative 7. Uh, it would have been a candidate, but since it's uh, negative 7 is also root of the numerator polynomial, it's not a 0. And finally, number 3, let's take a look. The horizontal, horizontal line y equals 0 0.5 is a horizontal asymptote. Well, let's compare the, the degrees of the numerator and denominator. They're both quadratics. They're both secondary polynomials. So indeed, y is equal to the ratio of the lead coefficients is your horizontal asymptote. And in this case, y equals 0.5 is a horizontal asymptote, so the answer is 3 only, B. All right, and so that goes, there goes that one. All right, for our next couple of problems, we've got two more problems to go. I'm going to ask that you pause the video and give it a chance yourself. So pause the video, take a look at this problem, and see if you can do it. This is from the year 2022, UILA number 9. Pause the video, see if you can do it, and then we'll get back up here and do it. Okay, so the answer is C, negative one-sixth. All right, so for our final problem, uh, we're going to do a slant asymptote problem. Uh, this you can do long division. You can use a TI Inspire. So let's go ahead and uh, ask you to pause, pause, work on it, and then you come back. This is uh, from the year 2022, the UILA release number 25. So your slant asymptote is x plus 2. x plus 2. So s of 6 is equal to 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. 8. And that is your answer, E. All right, so that's my discussion of asymptotes. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Let me take a quick moment and ask that if you enjoy this content, that you please hit the subscription button and the notification bell, that you leave a comment below, and you smash that like button. I got plenty of wonderful things in store for this channel, and I truly appreciate your support. My name is Tony.